Hello and welcome to our fourth and final part uh, of uh, Geonode uh, installation in Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu 20. And uh, in our previous session, we looked at we were able to look at how to install uh, deploying configure and configuration of both Postgres or PostGIS database, uh, installation of dependencies uh, for Geonode and uh, installation of Tom and configuration of Tomcat and uh, GeoServer, uh, which is a GIS server for uh, Geonode. So now we are going to look at how to install the web server. And uh, we shall begin with the installation of Nginx and uh, the UWSGA uh, plugin for Python. And yeah, so let's uh, begin. Um, we will continue from this part of installing the web server. So we will install and configure Nginx. And uh, we will begin by uh, copying and pasting this command for installing Nginx. And uh, it should uh, complete uh, installing the Nginx uh, just in under a couple of seconds. And uh, once it's complete, you can test whether Nginx is running by just typing in the local host in the browser and you will see this welcome message from uh, Nginx. So we will uh, create the UWSGI configuration for Geonode. So I'll just paste this command. Uh, it is in a .ini file. And uh, we'll just highlight all this content. It, is, uh, it has different configurations for Java memory, uh, username, uh, usernames and passwords for GeoNode, uh, GeoServer rather, and uh, PostGIS. Other settings for the mem cache, uh, GIS clients. If you're using Mapbox, for example, Google Maps in your Geonode uh, instance, then you can be able to configure all those settings in this uh, file. So I'm just paste and uh, let me take you to the top of this file. And uh, you'll notice that there's a warning here that has been displayed saying that uh, we need to change the, the virtual environment. Uh, reference to the virtual environment reference in the computer. So in this case, I will uh, move at the top of the file and I will uh, change, I'll just change this because I already know where my virtual environment is. If I do not know, then I can just start in a new terminal and uh, echo uh, work on home. Show me the location of my virtual environments. Alternatively, I can I can start the Geonode virtual environment, and I can uh, just uh, run which uh, pip or which Python. Okay. And definitely, these as you can see, the output it show it points to the Geonode uh, virtual environment. So I will exit. And I will just change my username, my the, the virtual environment to my current account. Which is, uh, and then, if I'm not sure, uh, because this, if we do not put the correct settings here, we may have problems. I can just come and check, and I can see that indeed this is a, a virtual environment by the fact that it has uh, these files that finally include library and configuration. So I will also scroll downwards. And uh, we have these configuration here for Java. So I will also change something here. We'll change the memory here to 8 GB the heap maximum and minimum heap memory i'll just set it to the same level uh, which will be 8 gb and 8 gb you remember in a previous file when you are deploying tomcat uh, we set up to could be 4 gb however if you're not sure about these values you can leave them as default but alternatively you can also check uh in the in this file you can uh, 
check the meminfo file. Uh, and uh, it contains all these, so it shows the total memory. So in my case, I believe my memory is about 12 gigabytes of gigabytes of uh, uh, RAM. Uh, yeah, so the total memory and the free memory is about 2 GB. Or the available memory is about 7 GB and all that. So we are not going to go into the details, so I'll just exit. But I've set these to uh, 8 gig gigabytes for uh, Tomcat. So I will just save the contents and then I will navigate to the next step, which is creating a sim symbolic link. So, and then we will restart the UWSGIS service. Oh, no, we will actually kill the service at the process. And then we will uh, create a startup uh, script. And in this startup script, you are going to just paste these two lines, copy and paste these two lines. And you'll notice by the shebang, this is called the shebang, the, uh, pointing to the bash uh, location of uh, Linux. So indeed, it, 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 it uh, shows the terminal that this is an executable uh, script. I mean, it is uh, to be read in uh, bash script. I've saved the file, I'll clear, and then I'll make the file executable. Uh, we have used this command in our previous uh, steps. So we'll create a service file for UWSGI, just add these couple of lines. Then we will save the contents, and then we will, uh, of course, reload the service daemon, and we will start the geonode uh, UWS GI service, and then we check the status. And at this point, I think yeah, we, this is expected, uh, but we are going to see how we are going to sort it out. Then we will enable so that even on system reboot, uh, this should be should uh, work. And then we will move the original configuration of uh, Nginx uh, into this file, conf.org, showing that that's the original file. And then we will create a new Nginx configuration. And this is uh, a way of uh, Geonode. So it's customized to work with uh, Geonode. That's why we are doing that. We are using a new or a uh, different configuration from the default. So I'll just save the file. And then we will remove the default, uh, the default configuration for Nginx. And we will create a new configuration uh, for Geonode uh, that incorporates the UWSGI and points to various folders like the static folder and the uploaded folder and the geo server location. So it also, in this case, the Nginx will also act as a proxy uh, proxy uh, server for the geo server that resides or that runs on Tomcat. So we will save the file and then we will prepare the uploaded folder. You've seen in the previous file, we have pointed our location uploaded to the uploaded folder. So this is where the uploads will be saved. Whenever you upload a shape file, a PDF, or what have you, um, it's going to be saved in that folder. So we will uh, similarly create a symbolic link, and then we will restart the both services, which is uh, Tomcat and Nginx. So let me just add them in a new, in one line, using the uh, logical and yeah, so that. It will execute, uh, it will first restart Tomcat and then it will restart uh, Nginx. Now we need to update the, set, the settings, some settings in order to use the database. And uh, there's a warning here that says we, we should uh, at this point have installed and configured the database uh, as expected. And uh, if you're not sure, then you can just run a sudo u postgres. Uh, let me run the PSQL and then you can uh, check. Uh, there's a, uh, this one I'm checking the user. So there's a Geonode user. And then we 
can check the databases. So we have the GeoNode data and uh, GeoNode, and their owners are GeoNode, just as we had created earlier. So I'll just type slash Q and uh, exit the uh, PostgreSQL server. So we will activate this virtual environment. And initially, uh, GeoNode was, uh, we normally used uh, local settings, which are simil similar to the settings.py for Django. But uh, now uh, the preferred way is using the envir environment. Uh, you will add some variables into the environment and uh, so that it is a preferred method in terms of uh, in the DevOps or in the production and localized environment. So we will navigate to the code base or the source code, and then we will ensure that all scripts are in this folder executable, uh, the, which are indicated by .sh. And then we will run a reset. So it's going to stop uh, GeoServer and uh, reset the uh, DB. And uh, these are uh, processes for the uh, resetting the or initializing GeoNode. So it attempts to stop the Java uh, process. In this case, if it's, if it's Tomcat that is using uh, the Java process, and you will see that it is saying that exception could not stop uh, Java running processes are Tomcat. So this is uh, some kind of an error. So um, let's first end the Tomcat service using the sudo system ctl stop uh, tomcat cat 9 so we have uh, after we have stopped it we are going to attempt to run the, the reset again yeah, so let's uh, run the reset again so it is stopping geonode and uh, it is, as you can see, it is complaining that there is a folder or a directory that is missing. And uh, let's run the uh, proceeding command. And you see, so this one, what it does is that it downloads and sets up the GeoNode. And it does this through uh, the development. So this is a development environment uh, that we are trying to set up. Uh, in our local, or rather, the local in our local uh, machine. So we'll give it some time so that it completes running the setting up. It is almost uh, completing the first uh, download, and then it's running the second uh, attempt or the second item. So as you can see, the links here, the first item was down, being downloaded from artifacts.geno.org. The other one is for Maven, which is a repository for uh, Java projects, like Spring projects like GeoServer. And for the artifacts, these, uh, we pulled some files from artifacts that included the GeoServer data and the GeoServer installation. So it tells us that GeoNo development environment is successfully set up. So if you have not set up an administrative account, please do so now using the paper start. So uh, let's uh, continue to the next command and then we'll do the synchronization. And the synchronization basically checks for, uh, it first of all makes migrations. Uh, for those who have worked with Django, they understand the concept of uh, migrations. And this is whereby it is creating the various the schema, the tables uh, that are being used or are to be used by GeoNode. And uh, there are quite a number, as you can see, we have even others which are Django-based GeoApps. Uh, GeoNode themes, we have layers, maps, map straw, uh, monitoring stuff and all that. So we'll, uh, it uh, will run some for some time, and then we can see how we can uh, proceed. 
I also believe this command also does the most of the work in collecting the static or copying the static files that I uh, include the files that are being used on the user interface for Geonode, uh, JavaScript, uh, the CSS styles, uh, the styles, and all that. So as as you will notice, it is uh, running this command collect static, and it will it has indi it indicates that it has copied two twenty five hundred and twenty two thousand five hundred and twenty seven files into the static root. Uh, but you can still uh, run this command. However, the sync uh, simply also does it. And now finally, we will uh, allow give permissions to this uploaded folder and the static root. Otherwise, if we do not do that, then we may have a problem trying to upload or even loading some of the styles and the JavaScript or Azure node. So the next step will include uh, updating of the UWSGI file. And in this case, we will log in as a super user. And then we will restart the Tomcat service. We've done this before. Uh, you'll notice that now we are using the root user, not the current, uh, the local account, the local user. So we, are, we have root privileges. So we will kill the service for UWSGI and then we will navigate to the repository folder. So we already in that folder. You can run PWD to confirm which folder that uh, you are in. Uh, it stands for print working directory. And then we will copy uh, these files. We will copy the geonode binary file, geonode update IP uh, script and uh, make them executable. And we will uh, refresh the geonode and geoserver authentication settings. Uh, so you'll notice one thing in this script that I'm about to copy that it points to localhost. Otherwise, if you are using, a, you have a host name somewhere, then you're going to use that. So it's attempting to start from Tomcat. And then after it does that, you're going to exit and then we're going to check out going to these uh, log files. So this is where Geonode uh, save the, the logs. So if there's an error, you can use this log file to uh, see where the error or be able to debug your Geonode instance or even know where, what, what is causing maybe an issue or if there are any warnings as well. This is similar to the logs that we have for Apache, MySQL, MySQL and the rest. Yeah, so we see something here saying that Django admin py command is not found. So we just uh, just move on, let's exit. And then we can uh, track the log file. And then we are going to create to reload the UWSGI configuration. And one thing that I will also strongly advise after we have reloaded this, it's advisable to restart the Nginx. Restart Nginx. And we also restart. We restart the UWSGI. Service. Yeah, so you'll notice that even the log file has appeared, it wasn't doing anything, and you'll see that uh, I don't, yeah, it's starting the UWSGI uh, process. And I think at this point, you'll notice that initially I had tried to open this uh, local host and it was showing an uh, error 502. So let's see what we have now. And I believe we have our Geonode up and running. This is how it looks like. So this is a user interface, a beautiful user interface and a very interactive. So we have data maps, apps and uh, about. So for the data, you can be able to check the layers that exist. You can check the documents and remote services that exist. Uh, you can be able to check on the maps that have been created, if any. Uh, you can be able to extend Geonode by adding uh, specific applications uh, that you know could uh, include something like uh, Django-based applications that are doing something, uh, or probably also making use of the services that we have, like Tomcat and uh, PostgreSQL, or even the web services as well. 
So we have the about that contains people, groups, and uh, group categories. You can also register a new user, and you can also do a sign in. And uh, you can also uh, this is we can also see the footer that contains uh, similar links, and of course uh, noting that it is powered by GeoNode. And you can also refer to the about and the developers and all that. And then you can look at the languages. If you click on this uh, drop down, you'll see that it supports various languages. Yeah, that uh, you can also be. If you're a developer, you can you know incorporate a new language. If you, uh, you are uh, you can incorporate a new internal internalization of a new language that is not there. So we have been able to deploy our GeoNode, and then the next step. I will skip it because this one requires a host name and currently I'm not running on a, a public IP or a, a, what do you call a public IP like this, uh, josephkarioki.com, yeah, example.org and all that. So we, we are going to skip this. Otherwise, I'll just summarize uh, the next steps whereby you update the Nginx and point it to your server host name. You restart the Nginx service after that. You also update the UWSGI configuration by changing every other that we have local host because this is a default configuration for GeoNode and you replace it with your host name. And of course, you have to restart the UWSGI uh, service for GeoNode. And then you uh, activate the uh, environment, uh, GeoNode environment, virtual environment, and then you can uh, log in as root. Uh, this we did this process previously, but you'll note something here that now we are not using localhost in this step. We are adding your host name at the end, and uh, it runs this executes this command for updating the IP. So in it it uh, updates GeoNode to recognize the host name or the IP address that you're using. So similarly, you update the GeoNode links uh, with the new host name, and uh, finally. Uh, in this step, you'll also be able to set up the HTTPS using uh, Let's Encrypt provider, which is a free and uh, open source uh, HTTPS uh, or SSL uh, provider. So you'll be able to run or generate your uh, certificates, uh, SSL certificates using the SATBOT, uh, Python SATBOT for Nginx. And then you'll also have to update the uh, inside the Django administration, you'll be able to update, you should also be able to update the SSL settings once you have completed the previous steps, and of course, add the authentication keys. Yeah, and finally, you will need to update this geonode.ini configuration uh, to point to your particular host name rather than uh, having this example.org because if you if you look at my geonode you'll notice that the header uh, or the title rather is example.com uh, so you may need to point it to your particular server and uh, the other steps are uh, of course installing or uh, installation of the rabbitmq server and for this one i will advise you to use the reference link above here uh, because this uh, link that is in the documentation Okay, it, it could be rather complicated in my view, especially for uh, newbies. So, yeah, I've tested it uh, using the installation of RabbitMQ. Uh, it is uh, using this URL that is in the documentation. And of course, finally, you install the supervisor and salary for the tasks. And uh, after you configure the salary as uh, salary and uh, RabbitMQ, you will uh, also install the mem. Cache and uh, the memcache helps uh, is a library that kind of helps in uh, relieving the usage of the CPU uh, memory uh, in a layman's term. It eases the use of uh, the CPU cores or the memory. Uh, uh, yeah, so it kind of helps in doing that. So that brings us to the end of this uh, tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, uh, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, if you like my content, uh, if you find this content very useful, you can support me by liking uh, this uh, video. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel and uh, you can also share the content uh, widely with us who may find these also beneficial. So this uh, 
so this brings us to the end of the this tutorial. Uh, we shall see how to interact with the uh, GeoNode uh, and how we can do various things uh, using GeoNode.